Welcome to the Sam and Billy Show, brought to you by Crowd Network. Hi everyone and welcome back to the Sam and Billy Show. In case you didn't know, I'm Sam and this is my gorgeous sister Billy. Billy, you are glowing today. Your makeup oh, looks amazing. <laughs> do you know what? It's probably because usually when we do our podcast, I don't really put much on, but I've just done my master interviews to film in, so it's kind of timing's worked out well for me today. Yeah, you look beautiful. And how are you feeling? Yeah, good. Fine, just um, just a bit tired, you know. I think at the moment life's really very full on and hectic. Like just filming. Like we we are going away next week, which I'm really looking forward to. We are filming the fi- first five days, but <laughs> um, <laughs> I uh, it's just you know what it's like before you go on holiday. Work wise, you just cram everything in, don't you? Like get everything tied up, done before you go away, and then hopefully I can have a little bit of a relax a bit of a break what's quite nice about you going away i know that it's there's quite a few of you going but because you are pregnant you've got the perfect excuse if you just want to slip off back to the hotel room and make yourself a cup of tea and have an early night because no one can really say oh please stay out or, i know do you know what i mean you're like you can just be like oh no it's been a long day i'm gonna go and chill now i'm gonna go and chill perfect, exactly perfect excuse that's what i was thinking like obviously there is a really big group of us going away and like, you know, I'm not going to be a party pooper at all. But when it gets to a certain time, and you'll understand this, where you're just done, like there's no going mm-hmm. back. You just feel tired, don't yeah. you? You just want to... I'm kind of looking That's forward it. to... Like, on holiday, I love, like pregnant or not pregnant, I love just like the long, like pool days, beach days, eating from the beach, you know, like not having mm-hmm. to rush oh, and get best. ready. I'm looking forward to a few days like that as well on holiday. I bet it's quite nice though, because you're going to a resort where you don't necessarily leave the resort, do you? As well, exactly. All the there. Everything's there. And I felt like there. when we was in, yeah, that's. See, I think that's better in a sense when you've got young children, because even when we was in Mallorca, we was like rushing to get to our dinner reservation every night, and I hate rushing. I just Me love too. to chill on holiday and not have to worry about, you know, getting in the car to the restaurant, making sure you're there on time. So it's quite nice that you can do that this trip, especially being pregnant as well. Completely, completely agree. Yeah, like I can just mooch on back to my hotel room, leave them all to it. (laughs) But how are you anyway? How's things? Good. I mean, obviously we've still got a long um, summer left. (laughs) But in the last week, I know, isn't it? So we obviously came to yours, didn't we, for a sleepover. The kids loved that. They were actually really well behaved at yours, wasn't they? I think we're getting to that stage now where we can actually really kind of enjoy our time together. Sit and chat. Sit and chat without the interruptions. Do you know what this morning, for now, exactly, this morning, Arthur went to me, I really miss poor Rosie. I was like, oh, I know. I said, when we get back from holiday, they'll come and have a sleepover again. Definitely. And you should come to ours, actually, as well, because I still feel bad that I didn't get Nelly a birthday present, but I'm going to make it up to her. (laughs) Oh, yeah, don't worry. She's had enough. But, yeah, what's your plans? So, well, yeah, so going back over the last week, we obviously stayed at yours. Um, I we had we actually had friends around last week. It's quite it's quite nice. We had like a um we had, we had, I mean we had a chef. Uh, we had um, Scott round cooking for us, and it was really nice. And uh, we I hired a bouncy castle, and the kids loved it. It looked so, amazing. I know it's not every day that you get a chef. It was kind of like. A, like a bit of a treat for all of us but sometimes just getting a bouncy castle because you get it for like 24 hours it's like worth every penny like the kids Completely. were on it the whole time like they just loved it and it had like a little slide thing on it so I think that's quite a good little tip if you're planning on doing like a barbecue of friends and family and things like that like I think we paid I can't remember it was like maybe a hundred pound or something I can't remember but they were on it from start to finish. It, yeah, because it it's something worth. new, isn't it, as well, in the garden. Exactly. Like, they just keep themselves entertained. And it was really funny because Rosie's got this like little mini DJ set thing and she was in the bouncy castle with that and it was all lighting up with all the lights and it reminded <laughs> me of like some sort of like disco rave thing in there. And they were just, they were just sitting in there, they wanted their lunch in there. You know, like, it's just like a novelty, isn't it? They love yeah, it. Yeah, of course. So that was fun. Um, and what else have been up to? Oh, obviously I had the, um, the Revive. Revive, launch. yeah. That was so, so was, lovely, wasn't it? It was so nice. And obviously kind of like gearing up for that all week, finalising everything. And the thing is with like when you host these big events, obviously we've got our PR team, like Rachel, and she pretty much organised everything. There's just always so much involved in like with, you know, down to decor and 
like food menu to drinks to invites to who you're going to invite it's just you know oh like your your kind of plan throughout the lunch and it's a lot and in the last sort of week I was sort of across everything making sure we you know had everything ready and good to go but um I was really pleased because obviously what happened was with our vegan launch as well it got brought forward so then the launch was kind of not a last minute thing but we only really had a few weeks to plan it but I think it's turned out really well and it was really good having like the nutritionist there and the doctor um speaking about like all things skin health and well-being because I thought that was like a really interesting kind of I me mean, too there. well that's because I obviously you know I I take revive I, I have it and I know about it because it's your brand but it was really interesting to sort of know like a little bit more about collagen and what's in it and like just about skin it was yeah it was such a lovely event and so also nice. as well I mean to be honest because with like guest lists and stuff I just said to the um our PR I was like look I think we should just get everybody there that's in kind of like health and well-being and beauty just to kind of like, you know, push the the new product out there and it being vegan and stuff like that. So, I mean, it was like, I mean, the, the menu was interesting. The food, wasn't it? Right. Can I just say, hands down, I couldn't be a vegan. I couldn't be a vegan. I just couldn't. I couldn't. Is it, sorry, is it a vegan or vegan? <laughs> Like it's uh, a separate no, just vegan, vegan. No, I went. I couldn't be a vegan. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't get me wrong, and that was probably as fancy as it gets. The food was amazing. Like, it was so tasty. Like the flavors, everything. But it was really th- funny after because me, you, and Mum was like, right, where should we go for dinner? <laughs> I, was, I was so hungry, honestly. Like, it was really nice. Don't get me wrong, and it was all like little bits and sharing and. But I was so hungry after, and I didn't really get a chance to drink either. And I really just wanted like to sit and enjoy a drink because obviously where it was my event, you sort of mingling and chatting yeah, to people of course. and stuff like that. Yeah. So after the event, I remember being just thinking, me, you, and Mum was like, "Where are we heading to? Where Where did we? Oh, we are in the Petit Maison. Didn't the Petit we? Maison we ate a lot as lovely. well. That was so nice. But no, it was but, yeah, such a lovely event. It went really well, and obviously we got some really nice pictures. And Edward was there. I mean, to be fair, like <laughs> it was. He was really good, but he, he was, was really good. But he was awake like all day, wasn't he? He was. He was Mr. Wide Awake Club. <laughs> Honestly, like I thought, because it was quite warm that day as well, I was thinking, oh, he's probably just going to sleep. I mean, the event was only two hours, but I thought, oh, he's probably going to sleep most of it. There's a lot going on, it's busy, but he was Mr. Wide Awake, wasn't he? <laughs> what, <laughs> yeah, what about, and also, like, how cute was he in his little vest all day? Like, in his little That was arms. so funny. People must have been thinking, she really dressed him in that. Um, so yeah, he had like a cute outfit on, but it was really humid, wasn't it, that day? And like where me, you and mum were kind of like passing him around between the three of us, in the end I was like, the outfit's got to come off. So he just had that little vest on. That was so cute. <laughs> it's like sun's out, guns out. In the wasn't pictures, it? It looks like, yeah. <laughs> like a little, like, like little a muscle mini, man. Like a little muscle man, that's what he looked like. But you know, like on the way home, so we so we ended up not getting home till quite late, did we? Because we'd yeah. done the event, we hung about a little bit, we went to um, this nice little restaurant bar thing, didn't we, for a drink? And then we went on somewhere else. So by the time we actually got home, I think it was like, what, what did you say, like 10 o'clock? What time yeah, did you get home? About, yeah, it was, it was about half nine, ten, yeah. And he was still going. He was still awake. So the whole what? journey I can't he believe awake. he didn't sleep the whole time. He wasn't home. crying. He was just awake. Anyway, so we got <laughs> into bed. And like we, like we as we thought, when we got into bed, he slept He slept all the way through to about five o'clock for Oh, amazing. And then he went back to sleep, um, and then that afternoon he slept for like four hours. I was thinking, yeah, because you've been out, up and out all day. And up, Do you know like, what it is? He didn't want to miss out. He didn't want to miss out on anything. No, he didn't. But yeah, that was quite tough. <laughs> <laughs> quite tough. No, but he was as good as gold, wasn't he? Really? It's because you want to be present, don't you? And then when they're there and they're sort of awake, you want to make sure they're okay. More they're than anything, all... then you sort of still want to do like the work side, and it's but anyway, the juggle is real. The juggle is yeah. real. <laughs> so. A little update for you all. Yeah. Samantha, I know I spoke to you about this the other day. I have some kind of mice, potentially could be rats or something going on in this house at the moment. What do you mean? So In the house? In the house. So I'd say about a week ago, heard something under my bed at night. Under your bed? Under my bed. Not in the loft? No, 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 no. In my bedroom, right? So heard something under my bed. I thought... Like, I woke up because I, I, I'm a really light sleeper. I do tend to wake up quite easily. <laughs> so I'm really paranoid because I'm actually up 
in Nelly's room. Oh, you, and you keep I'll looking down at your feet. Is the mouse know, there? Well, no, no, but I'll, I'll tell you why in a minute. So, <laughs> hear all this noise under my bed one night. I, I freaked out. I was like, sitting up thinking, what is that? And then, because we've been sleeping with the windows open, then I started getting paranoid thinking someone's trying to get in my house. So, <laughs> I looked out the window, got back in bed, eventually went back to sleep. Next night, so you know... As you know, I love, and you do as well, but I've been having, indulging tea and biscuits in my room, in bed. Yeah. Okay, right, so, so okay. I've left a gin packet of ginger nuts on the side of my bedside table. So, ginger nuts. Ginger nuts. So That's that, not my choice of biscuit. Oh, I love a ginger nut. And I buy <laughs> these ones that are like 36 calories each per Are they biscuit. thin? Not really thin. They're a normal biscuit. They're just really low in fat. Mm. From Marx's, M&S everyone. Ooh. Ginger snaps. Anyway, so Nellie's, I'm, I've got into bed. Nellie's coming for a cuddle. This was like the next night. She had, has a ginger nut. She's obviously thrown the pack of biscuits on the floor, like after, you know, like, or they've dropped on the floor off the bed or yeah. something. That night I've woken up, I can hear this like mad rustling, right? Like no. almost like someone's got a crisp packet, like rustling oh, no. under my bed. So I'm like freaking out. So Where I've literally... Come- I can so I've jumped up. I've looked where I can hear the noise from, and I just see like a ginger nut pack move. Well, I've <gasps> sprung out the bed, oh, shut no. the door. Greg was sound asleep. No, left Greg didn't. in there and went and got in the bed with Arthur. Next morning, I, I said scream. to Greg, "No, awful, right?" So I said to Greg, "Right, I'm I'm telling you now, there's some kind of mouse or something's going on in this in this room at night." So anyway, so hello. Funny. Carry on. So. Hi. Um, so anyway, Greg's like, it's all in your head. You're going mad. It's all in your head. I, so he pulls the, the <laughs> bedside table out. There's all like shredded up ginger nut pack. Like it's been shredded with like teeth. And then there was, and then there was um, no. like a, you know, like the paint off the bedside table. One of the legs had been yeah. like gnawed off. <gasps> right. So not only have you got a mouse in the house, it's damaging Brilliant. furniture. You need so to get this, a cat in there. I know. So this, sorry, this story's going on. This night, I then stay in Nelly's bed. Same thing happens. So now I'm in this room, this room that I'm in now, top room. I've woken up in the night. I can hear rustling in her bathroom. It's following you around the house. There's rustling going on in her bathroom. I've realised there's an empty crisp packet in there. No. Right. So anyway, now we've got pest control. Yeah. Pest control round here. She's going, no. (laughs) (laughs) Just you know the story, ain't So we, we've had to get pest control round here, and to this morning it was. So it is a mouse. We don't know because so they've put down all these monitors. What are the options? They so he thinks it's a mouse or a rat. He thinks possibly a rat because there's not loads oh, of drop ins. No. no, I know, and it's been awful. So this morning, I got a bit shirty because I was <laughs> like, right. Last night, I was up all night. It was under my bed again. Like I spoke to the guy. He's like, you know, it's a six-week process. I went sick. I'm expected to live... A six-weeks process? With a mouse under my bed for or a rat for six weeks. Yes. A rat? Oh, don't. It makes me feel really funny. It's horrible. It's awful. Is there mouse traps? Well, it's like... They're like these monitors. They're not like what you imagine. Like an old... He said what they do is they lure the mice in... And then they tell you if they're going to be, and then they go, and then they don't come back. Oh, I don't. Right, I, so I, they don't kill them. They just they just basically get rid of them somehow. It's really weird. Don't I'm oh, like no. freaking. It's horrible because every night I'm not sleeping. Let's have a look. How and I'm rustling. Cute. Like I can hear rustling, and it's just awful. I'm just gonna have a little see. Hmm, there must be some bits in. Oh, yeah, like they, they're these systems, I can see. They're like pest repeller. Oh, actually, why don't you get a pest re- mm, No, you could, you could get might. them. Oh, I can see one now in Nelly's, Nelly's bedroom. But Nelly then said to me, she was like, Mummy, she come in at like two in the morning. She went, I can hear the mi- mouse in my room. She was like, it's like scratching in the walls. Do you know what this reminds me of? Remember when, when I had Dave the hamster when I was little and we, yeah. he used to get out of his cage and then we'd have to listen for the scratching to see where well, Dave the hamster where, was. But this is what I can hear. And also, so it'll go really quiet and then I'll hear... <gasps> right. 
I'm not. Good oh no! With that. Sorry, I've, I've got to tell you. I, I've missed a really big part of the story. Right, go on. <laughs> so after your event, Greg took the kids to Bournemouth that day, didn't he? So he was staying down yeah. with Bournemouth with the kids mm-hmm. and the granddads. Me and Mum get back to my house. Right, I said to Mum, I was like, right, Mum. I said, there's a mouse. I showed her that obviously she knows the mouse scenario, mouse rats, whatever it is. So the the black box is down the side of the bedside table next morning me and mum have woken up so we went to bed about half 11 the box was there we wake up in the morning the box has gone what disappeared what do you mean no what's happening here this is like all no it's really so now i'm freaking out even more thinking that there's like so i ring i ring the guy he's laughing you mean the box has gone right the the box has gone taken the box the box is nowhere to be seen i can't find the box we're sure this is a rat I'm freaking out. He's like, Billy, in all my years, mice are not strong enough to carry that box anywhere. I was like, what? I'm not, I said, I'm not lying to you. I'm not going mad. He said, have you got a cleaner? Has the cleaner moved it? Has the kids moved it? I'm like, right, no could it be one. A cat? Has... So our neighbour's cat has come into our kitchen. So the other day, a glass But then we would see it, nowhere. wouldn't we? No. So a glass smashed out of nowhere, right? The back door was open. Um, our neighbours have got a cat. We always see it floating about, but never, like, has it come in. And um, a glass smashed, and it was like, well, what's, you know, that that was odd. It was just on the side like that, and it was oh. you know, there was no wind, there was nothing. So I was, like, a bit freaky, like, a bit creepy. Anyway, there was a time when we was on holiday, and Gaynor was staying at the house, and she caught the cat coming in into the kitchen oh. and smashed the glass. But then... But then Cats wouldn't necessarily like no, to wrestle it's, through. No, it's a small animal because I've heard it scurrying under the bed. You know, like the little footsteps and the... Mm. Shh, like, it's really weird, really bizarre. Strange smells and sounds. Um, drop-ins, any drop-ins? Footprints? Well, I thought I... I sa- <laughs> see damage, there's definitely damage. Definitely damage. See a sound, uh, see a drop-in yesterday as well. Hear the sounds. Oh. All the signs are there. Greg thinks it's hilarious. Mm. He's like... Because I ring him up, I'm like, oh, this has happened. Or, like, yet when he was in Bournemouth, I rang him in the morning. I was like, the black box is missing. Anyway, Greg finds the box last night under the bed, like pushed right under the bed. Oh, that's really strange, though. Obviously, the kids weren't there, so they wouldn't have moved it. No, no, that's what I was saying. Like, no one Mm. was there. Right, this says here about setting setting snack traps. So you're not killing the rat, but like, you could set up snack traps. Did they they do that? (laughs) Like yeah, that's the what they've sort of ginger snaps on the floor. That's then, what they've like, sort of done. That's that's the thing. Have like a I, basket fall over the rat. <laughs> like I know, I know that, that that they're coming in for food, but oh, I don't know. Anyway, it's that's been a bit draining this week. <laughs> that's really awful. I'm sorry that you happened to go through this. I went to the guy. He he. Because I first of all I messaged him and he said to me. He rung me. He was like, I can see you're very upset by your text messages. I was like, because I was like, yes, I am. Yeah, right. I, I was like, I haven't slept for four nights. So where do you plan on sleep? Sorry, I know that we're dragging this out, but it's really interesting. Where are you planning on sleeping tonight? I've been musical bed. So I've slept in Nelly's bed, I've slept in Arthur's bed, and then I got back in my bed in the end because I thought, I can't have a mouse chasing me It seems me out of my like room. the rat's following you. <laughs> it seems like it's That's the weirdest thing. The it's following me around the house. I've got rid of any trace of food. It's awful. <laughs> it's following you and the biscuits in around. <laughs> It's time to hear from one of our sponsors. You all probably know us by now, but when we're not pregnant, we do love a glass of wine or two. And what we want you to know, guys, I'm speaking to you, our listeners, um, would you like to try a case of exceptional French wine? Of course they do. (laughs) Who wouldn't? Which is exactly what our sponsor, Wine52, are offering. To all of our lovely listeners, you can get three wines for just £10. That's just over £3 per bottle. All you need to do is go to www wine52.com forward slash Sam and you'll get three beautiful bottles of wine delivered right to your door. Oh, I do miss having a glass of wine in the evenings. I think especially in the summer as well, like a pale glass of rosé. 
Don't worry, not long, not long, sis. <laughs> I've been a member of Wine 52 for a while now and I absolutely love it. They're all about showcasing the very best wine from a different region each month. This month it's Bordeaux, which features a crisp and zesty Sauvignon Blanc. Sounds delicious. Actually, what do you prefer, ma'am? Red or white? White, definitely white. Well, with Wines 52, you can have a choice of a mixed case or a red only or a white only case. And they also include Glug magazine, which looks at each region's wine culture and two snacks as well. Hmm. After your first case, you'll join the monthly wine club. No minimum commitment. And if it's not for you, you can pause or cancel at any time. So remember, that's www wine52.com forward slash Sam to claim your case today. That's the word wine and then the numbers five and two dot com slash Sam. I had a clinic this week. I'm not sure who wants <gasps> oh, to hear about that. I would, I, I definitely need one of those. So the, what, the lady that I go to, it's kind of like you, you, you sit in the chair and you, you sort of, you're on your own. You're not with the person that does it you sort of on your own you kind of they tell you what to do sort of sort yourself out and then you just lay like on your phone there's a bit of like nice music on in the background whatever you want to do and then she's got like a buzzer so if you need any help you just buzz but I like you I was actually really constipated in pregnancy with Edward and I had to wait a little while really because you can't have obviously clonics when you're pregnant and also you just don't want one soon after having a baby no gosh. and I was the other day I was like I'm really ready and I can't tell you how just, just how nice it makes you feel like you feel so de-bloated and oh, light so you know, like, nice it's got so many other obviously like so many health benefits but I've really enjoyed it so definitely recommend it guys if you're thinking about it I think it's I really enjoy it I'd I've really only it ever I've had one once and that was that time with you right oh yeah I'm sure was who was ago. no but it was like the really old fashioned I say old fashioned but when they first come about and I'm sure it was yeah. me you and mum in the room it was and like we all sat in the room and the lady inserted the tube and we all watched each other's like the, the pipes yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we was all like ooh ooh yeah, look at ooh. that but I, but I, I remember that I found that experience really bad. That's why I never done it again. But since no. you went to the one that you told me about, I really want to do it. Well, I used to do it in Hertfordshire and then didn't do it for ages. And then I found someone over here in Surrey and it, same concept, like you sit like on your own and I don't know, it's just something nicer about it. Obviously, I think because like you'd have your own privacy and I don't know, I just much prefer doing it on my own. But yeah. Definitely recommend that, guys. What else What else have I been up to? Oh, I'm getting Invisalign. Did I tell you that? Oh, yeah. Do you know what it is? I just feel like when you get older, and especially when you have, uh, where I say like when you are when you have kids, but it's true, like your teeth change when Completely. you're pregnant and when you have children and they move and they become softer. And I've just noticed over the few years, like, and I'm happy with my teeth. I've never had a brace and they're just my natural teeth. But... I've started to see some of the move. Yeah. And I just want to correct it now before it gets worse. So I went for my first appointment. Because there isn't much to do, the dentist was like, I really do think we could probably get what you want to achieve within like the next four to five months. Because some people have them on for like a year, 18 months, don't they? Like a long time. And then do you so wear I'm the quite, retainer? Yeah. And I'm quite, and, and do you know what? I actually need to wear the retainer as well because I grind my teeth at night. Same. So, um, they, he said that at the end when you're finished all your treatment and you're happy with your smile, like you'll just have one that you just wear every night to bed. So I was like, I actually need that because then that will stop me grinding my teeth. So that's yeah. interesting. So I'll, I'll keep you posted on that, but I'm yeah. actually looking forward to it. Like just I don't know, like the whole kind of just process the process and, the and like see and also your when you see like your before and after photos, that's when you'll really notice it. Yeah, that's what I was thinking because they've done this. They've got this. The technology is so smart, isn't it? Like I went in there and they take a photo. It takes like thousands of photos a second. It's like on this like stick, and they just took all pictures of my mouth, my teeth, my gums, and then it comes up on this three D screen. Yeah, and it was just like my mouth, like inside my mouth, every sort of angle That's of my mad, teeth. Isn't I was it? like, wow, like technology. Anyway, so then they obviously they they build the retainers from that p image. Wow, it's just, like they don't they don't do the you don't do the mold thing anymore. Oh god, so do you know you just put your it? mouth in that like cold gooey oh, and it mold makes you stuff. gag. So they don't do that anymore. It's all done by this photo. It's just amazing. Wow. So anyway, yeah, technology. that's really cool. Yeah, technology. Tell me about it. 
but yeah so and this weekend pretty chill this weekend mum's coming over actually yeah um, she said. but yeah just yeah just kind of taking it each day as it comes got a few things planned next week oh feeding got one little munchkin that needs milk Aww. yeah bring him thirsty <laughs> thirsty <laughs> work thirsty thirsty hello darling you've been sleeping <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Put him show, let Billy see him. Yeah. Hey. Hello, it's Auntie. Hello. I think he's looking Hello. at himself. <laughs> Sorry, that's just reminded me of Ed, Edward coming in for a feed now. What about the yeah. other night with me, with the um, liquid squeezing from the nipple? Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's so true though, honestly. When I remember being quite early, not not that you're early on, but you can actually get like fluid comes out of your nips, like like early on in pregnancy. Right. So everyone knows what we're talking about. I but basically the other morning I woke up and I thought I could feel like a little sink, like a little bit damp or wet on my nipple. Oh. Didn't think anything of it. Anyway, I have a shower that night. I get out the shower and. I just, I don't know why I was tempted to do it, because I know you probably, I don't yeah. know if they advise that you should do it or not. Yeah, it's fine, yeah. But I, I just sort of squeezed my nipple a little bit, and like some, it must be colostrum, mustn't it? Yeah, well, I don't, I'm, I'm not 100% sure, because colostrum is like the yellow. That's what it, well, that's what it was like. So it was yellow. So kind you should of. start freezing that. It's oh like really, gosh. really Pumping powerful. In. Like, if you're getting quite a lot, a lot off, you should actually freeze it. And then save it because the first Maybe few I need days to do of some research. Yeah, because the first few days of baby, that colostrum is like the most powerful, like amazing stuff for the newborns. Even if you're not going to breastfeed, just try and get the colostrum in them. It's well, like I remember getting that probably the last four weeks of pregnancy, but I never remember having it this early on. <laughs> no, um, I remember Mum was like, "Billy, uh, can I just ask you why are you squeezing your nipples?" <laughs> I did it though. It's intriguing, don't you think? It's though? just you, like I it's don't just know. like. <laughs> yeah, I, but I'd done the same. Like when I was pregnant with Edward, I'd done it the same. Like early on, and, and Paul was like, "Big Paul was like, oh, don't do that. Please don't do that." And I was like, "What? Like it's just yeah, intriguing. It was, like it's like you have to do it." Do you know it. what, Greg? I, I said to I mentioned it in front of Greg the other day. He said, "I don't want to know. Don't even tell me squeezing stuff out of your He's nipples." Not, yeah, he doesn't want to. <laughs> oh, I made Paul. I made Paul try my breast milk um, once years oh. ago when I was breastfeeding little Paul. He hasn't oh, tried I it since. This. He hasn't. Yeah, I was like, "Come on!" No, he hasn't tried it since. I was like, "Come on, you've got to try some." <laughs> How did he try um, it on a spoon on your finger? No, it in was tea? just. I think it was just expressed in a put. It was in a cup. Oh, um, what he done a sip? Yeah, like he sipped it. He didn't like take it from my tit, did he? What do you think? You how do you think? <laughs> well, no, I thought he might. You might have like he might have like swiped your nipple and just like licked it off his finger. No, he took an, an actual, actual sip. like gulp. Oh a no, sip that's gross. And tried it, and I did. You have to. Have you never tried your breast milk? No. I'm sorry. Well, I don't. I actually, often, I think I might but... have. I think I might have like licked a little bit off my finger once with Arthur. <laughs> Just, it's just and like it's really, really sweet. sweet. No, it's but like I can't believe so he, took sweet. A, he took a sip, like a glass. He just went like and tasted it. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, I mean, look, but, um, that, that sounds ridiculous, Paul. really, because it's full of goodness. Yeah, and we all drink cow's milk. It's actually yeah. like, it's even gross when you think of a cow. Like, we all sip the cow's milk, but... Like a big <laughs> udder. Ooh. A big udder. But no, I haven't, I haven't tried this milk this time and I don't know if I did with Rosie but just with little Paul I was intrigued I think because it, it was the first time ever breastfeeding I was like well, what does this taste like um, and that was about the other day when we was um, after the launch when we went for dinner me you and mum and you was holding Edward and he was like really like head banging <gasps> into your big yes. bosom wasn't he he was like he must have th- he was probably thinking oh these probably are probably nice, smell something maybe definitely if there's I think stuff he probably knows out. probably knows that you're pregnant and there's some kind of like hormonal I don't know you must be able to smell something and then he was just like headbutting your big boob yeah <laughs> wasn't he <laughs> what about that I oh, found out a really baby. interesting fact the other day so my nipples mm. have gone really dark during this pregnancy really dark and oh yeah share the 
um, fact because fact, mine yeah. is still really dark. So a lot of this like does happen. It's in a, it's hormonal. So um, the reason why our nipples go so dark when we're, when we're pregnant and then when we've had the baby is because it's almost like that natural instinct for the baby to see the nipple because they only see in black and white, don't they, for the first part of their lives. So it's so that they can find the that nipple. And that's why, apparently, that's why they go so dark. It's really that interesting. That is like human nature fact. and the human body is amazing, isn't it? Mm, it's incredible. Absolutely incredible. <laughs> We asked our listeners to send in some names because you were a little bit stuck on boys' names. Well, yes, we've had. Some... I'm still stuck with boys' names. So we've actually had some really nice, actually, um, people giving like some suggestions. So we've got Albert, Albie. Yeah, Al. I love. We've got an Albie. We've got an Albie. Albie. That's the only thing. Um, Hugo. Not not me. Alfie. No. Harry. I like Harry, but it's just not me. George, we've got a George. I love George. Archie. But we've got a George. No, it's not me. I like Archie. I Freddy. like Archie. So many Freddies. We've got Freddie as well. Yeah. Henry. Greg side. Hem- I, I love Henry, but it's just not me. Uh, Jacob. No, it reminds me of Jacob's crackers, which Nelly loves, but no. And she calls him <laughs> Jacobs. She goes, Where's my Jacobs? Jacobs. <laughs> Bridgie. Like, I really like Reggie. What is it, Reginald? Reginald. I I like Reggie, but I just don't think it's me. Reggie. Um, Harrison. There's there's so many Harrisons. There's like a few in like uh, Paul and Rosie's year. We've got Harrison, Greg's side of the family. Oscar? No, not Oscar. I really like this last one, and I I was debating on calling Edward. I wasn't actually, it was always Edward, but I was, it was in my name list. Thomas. I mean, that's really sweet. Thomas is lovely. But I just, it's not, you know, like with a name, I think when you find your baby name, like regardless, I mean, not that I would ever name my baby before they're born, but you just know. Yeah. And that's not, and I'm not none getting, of them names are it. I mean, thank you everyone for all the suggestions because they are <laughs> lovely names. Basically, thanks, but no thanks. Please but come they, back with just some not, more suggestions. Yeah, they're just not for me. And it's actually getting to the point now, like, I was at a family party um, the weekend and we was all sitting there going through loads of names. And actually, a lot of those names on there, others had said, have I told you about that Greg liked Hercules? Have I told you that? No, he didn't. Oh, my God. No, and it's it's actually... I thought it was a joke and he's actually being serious. What's Hercules? Her- is it Greek? Hercules. I was like, are you serious? Hercules? And then Where's Arthur that the other day from? said Boris... Bor- Arthur went, what about <laughs> what about Boris? I was like, that's <laughs> hilarious. That is a, that's so funny. <laughs> Me and Rosie went out this morning. Um, yeah, on our own, just us, no Edward. Oh, um, wow. I fed him before I left, and then I was out for like two hours. So like I can time things now before I have yeah. to feed him. So he's so getting into other... like a routine sort of thing. Yeah, and he can be like entertained without just being on my boob the whole day, which is quite nice actually because that gives me a little bit more time with the other two. Like me and Rosie went um, into Cobham, went to Gow's and got a muffin and... Oh, how lovely. We went just to a little shop to just like, yeah, just wandering about, you know, for a little bit just to get Rosie out. Honestly, like little Paul is good as gold. Like he'll sit and entertain himself for hours but Rosie at home all day is just not the one she's yeah, just it's hard. climbs the walls and where it, obviously it's kids holidays and there's like I feel like she's, she's doing gymnastics camp once a week which is sort of taking up one day and it's not even a day it's like three hours or something but we've sort of had our holiday and all of her friends from school are on holiday so we can't oh, even like hard. do play dates it's hard it's like. so difficult well actually today this is quite funny um, Arthur's gone to pony camp with Nelly. I was really oh, laughing. Yeah, it was that's like, nice though. <laughs> take your brother to pony camp day. But Nelly was like, this morning, <laughs> this morning she was all like territorial, right, about pony yeah, camp. Yeah, I she, know exactly what you mean. Like, I, we are really lucky to be fair because of horse riding where she loves yeah. it so much. She's like, any days where we've not been doing family things or filming or whatever else, she's been going horse riding and pony camp. So 
um, this like this morning after I was like, Mummy, I really want to go pony cat and Greg and I had to film our master interviews this morning so, and I didn't have any childcare for Arthur. So well, that's I thought, like a little godsend then I though, was isn't like, it really? Oh my god, amazing. Cause... So I I text Lois, who runs the stables, she was like, Yeah, absolutely bring Arthur. Oh, oh I'm so happy he wants to come, he'll he'll do a lesson. Anyway, so he was so excited. He was all like proud. He'd oh, like, bless. I made him his pat lunch. Like, and it's really funny. I think that's right? what they love most about it as well, the pat lunch. Don't he they? was like, like so mummy. He bag. went, when am I going to eat my pat lunch? Do you think I'll eat it after my lesson? And anyway, then Nelly sort bless of like, him. she was all excited. But then she sort of started getting a little bit like, well, because um, I put him in shorts and t-shirt. She said, no, he can't put, he can't wear shorts and t-shirt. I've got an old pair of joppers he can, he can borrow. I said, Nelly, he's not going to wear a pair of your joppers. <laughs> it's really warm. I said, just put, let yeah. him wear his shorts. He's not a pro rider. I'm sure it's fine. No, mum, no, I'm telling you now, he needs to wear long trousers. Like, she was being all like, so funny, yeah. like Mrs. Bossy. And I said to her, I was like, you've yeah. got to look after him. Like, all the other girls there love him, so I knew it's like, you know, he's going to get so much attention all day. Well, as well, it's because it's her it's her thing and it's her place, so she just Yes. Wants, and it's like we, it's like you, like, you know that she, uh, we all know that Nelly knows all about it, but she just wants to make everyone clear. Like, she sort of knows what goes on down there and, like, I'm, yeah. I'm in charge. That's I exactly imagine. it. Oh, she was so territorial about it this morning, and then, and then she, um... And then that was it. She's got a new grooming kit that she got for her birthday and we packed it all last night. So she's got it to take. And this, she was like trying to get oh, out the nice. door. And, she, and, and that's another, and she had a side fringe cut in last night. So now she's got this side fringe oh, like she? waffing around in her face. Oh, nice. right, think, and she was like, I've just got so Getting much so on my up. mind before I have to leave this house, mum. I was like, calm <laughs> down. I wonder where she gets that from. I know. <laughs> Sounds like you. It's just Sounds so like me. Just so much just all this out house. Of <laughs> but no, it was funny. So yeah, oh, they, he's getting on. Lois texts me just before I started saying, um, "Little update. He's loving it. He's been really good." So yeah, it's done me. Oh, that's it's good. Done me a real favour today. That's <laughs> nice. Yeah, a bit of peace and quiet in the house. Just take it. Yeah, take those options where you can. Exactly. Honestly, that's what I was needed. thinking. Make the most. <laughs> So we also had from our listeners, you know, I was talking about exercise, still haven't done any exercise, by the way, guys. Um, but I was asking for options because I wanted to do something more fun, didn't I? I want to kind of do like a sport or something, just a little bit more. I just find the gym quite boring. So um, I had some ideas from the listeners. So netball, which has been the most love popular. Love netball. See, I love netball, right? And I really do. We obviously were both on the netball team at school growing up. Done a little bit when we got a little bit older, but I haven't played in years. The thing is with netball, don't I you find that like, adult netball is really feisty? Really have feisty played, and quite aggressive, like, like elbows. Aggressive. Yeah, elbows, you know, like have to cut your nails. You can't like yeah. do this. Do and I just, I would love to play netball and find like a local kind of netball team. But for it not to be so feisty... <laughs> Especially as a beginner, getting back Feisty, into it. yeah, I know. Feisty. No, and also it could be one of those things, if you join a team, it might be like, you know, like all the others sort of looking, you know, like. Yeah. I'm <laughs> You'd not have so, to do it with I, I someone, I think, a friend. I think so. Second one, swimming. See, I'm not really good with public swimming pools, so I'm not sure about that one. Although I love swimming, so it's a shame, really. Someone's gone horse riding with Rosie. Horse Rosie just riding. doesn't horse ride anymore, and... She yeah. loved it when she was little, like as you all know, like she was on a horse at eleven months old. But since the gymnastics, she's just kind of not really into the horsey thing anymore, which is fine. Like they, I think they all go through different stages, don't they? And some things stick and some don't. But she's yeah, and I, do you know what? I do like horse riding, but it's not my passion. You know, like people that are into horses, you know, that's their world, isn't it? I wish, I wish, like wish, Nelly. wish. That's I what you're going to have with Nelly. Well, this is it. Like, and I, and I really wish that I, mm. I could conquer that fear so I could do it with her as well eventually. But I just don't know if it's. I just, I'm too scared, basically. See, I don't. I could jump on a horse. That's not really it for me. I just feel like it's not really. It's not what you want to do. I'm do no. Exercise, but thanks for the. No. Roller skating. Need someone to do it with. Um, mama, baby, exercise classes. Roller skating's good. They've actually got, um, so we're not too far. So there's a big roller skating place in Guildford. But then, am I going to go roller skating on my own? Like, is that a little bit? 
<laughs> Again, that's something to do with friends. Yes, definitely need a friend. That's one definitely to do with friends. Crossfit, squash, trampoline in. Uh, and then in brackets it says, watch that pelvic floor. Yeah. So it's funny actually that they said that. We've got a trampoline at home and I actually do like getting on the trampoline, um, as you know, being a, an ex-gymnast when I was younger. <laughs> um, but I, every time I get on it at the moment, I'm just not ready. Like, honestly, you do oh, feel gosh. that. Yeah, like, maybe it's a bit too soon. Pull down. It's too soon. Surfing, would love to surf. Football, I, I just... I'm not. I, I'm not very good at football. Actually, this is this will make you laugh. We we've got a new goalpost um, in the garden that Paul set up yesterday. But this isn't any goalpost. It's like a a professional, like real size football goal goalpost. It's humongous. Oh god! And it took Paul all day to fix it up yesterday. He's just one of them people that won't take help or won't book the person to come and do it and and set it up. So he ended up doing it himself. Um, and he's all pleased with himself. Anyway, it's massive. Like, and I was looking at it and I was thinking, this is so annoying because I don't know if you get this in yours, but I'll be the one that has to end up going in goal. Yeah. And it's huge. So, and I was just like, this is just so unnecessarily big. Like, we could have just got like a little small football goal. But anyway, yeah, I'm not really into football for myself. I like watching it, but not not playing it. So. We'll Talking of football, how, we how well were the women's England Women, football team? How well did they play? That was amazing. That was just incredible. Really enjoyed watching that, actually. I think that's probably changed a lot. I feel like that football game has changed a lot in women's sport Completely. now. Completely. Like Complete you know game I mean? changer. Yeah, huge game changer. It was just amazing. But, um, right, should we go on to our Ask Us Anything? Yes. We've got a few little questions. So... This is funny. What are the best and worst things about Paul and Greg? Okay, so the best thing about Greg, I'd say, is that he is a really good organiser. You know, like, he's willing to take on... You know, if we go on holiday, like, he's good at planning Mm -hmm. and organising He's very organised. I'd say that's definitely one of the best things. (laughs) The worst Mm -hmm. thing, (laughs) I would say, is that he is a sulker. He can sulk big time and it drives me insane. So my best thing about Paul has got to be how hands-on he is as a dad. And I'm very grateful for that. So, like, he just really, really helps out with the kids. And he's really good with them and has the patience. So that's amazing. And my worst thing probably is the fact that when he says he's going to the gym, he goes to the gym, but he's there for, like, three, four hours. Oh. I'm like, what are you doing? What could be taking that long in the Milking gym? And I know it. because no concept he's of got time. a membership, but a really lovely no. And and I know why because the, where he's got a membership is like a really lovely um, like health center and gym. So he's obviously going there and kind of, I you know he's probably doing like a little bit of gym and then he's probably going sauna and spa and you know doing bits on his phone taking his time. But I'm like, who spends three four hours in the gym? So that annoys me. No, that's really annoying. Especially at the moment. Um, <laughs> oh, I know, right? Um, actually, he hasn't been that much recently since the holidays. Although he said he's going today. And he went, as soon as you'll finish your podcast, I'm going to the gym. So I'm just like writing off the rest of the day. Next question. This is quite a funny one, actually, because I've recently had this conversation with Nelly. How would you feel if any of the kids wanted to go on to Love Island when they were older? So... Obviously, Nelly now, she's eight. You know, she sees the advert. She knows about Ekinsu and Davide. I think she actually said before, mm-hmm. didn't she, that <laughs> she wants to name the baby Davide. So Nelly said to me, um, oh, mum, I'm i going to go on Love, Love Island when I'm older. I was like, are you? And she was like, yeah. And she went, a hot new shepherd enters the villa. <laughs> <laughs> that is hysterical. Look, I think... I could just- I could imagine Nelly on there. Could That's you, the funniest thing. Well, that the is the like, funniest thing, isn't it? You could imagine. I you feel could actually like, imagine yeah. It. Um, I can. I think, right, I would ne- I would always be so supportive of my children's decisions, choices. I think mm. that you can guide them. Listen, you know as a parent how you've brought them up. You know their personalities. I think we mm-hmm. could both say, like, we think they, you know, if any of them went on there, it would be fine. I mean, it's always that, I think Love Island more more so than any of the other shows, mm-hmm. it's that thing of, oh, God, like, you don't really want to see them talking about certain things on TV, do you? Like, let's be honest. Yeah, and that the nature of that show is very much about it's relationships, like the, isn't it? The episode where they have to do the sexy dancing, 
No. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I know. <laughs> I know. But I don't then know. Then that's how we feel. You just don't know how the kids are going to be when they're older, like personality and stuff. But so with that question as well, I just think that obviously with Love Island now, you know, the the contestants that go in, are they contestants? Um, you know, they come out with so much fame yeah. overnight, like more than any show out there. Um, the audience obviously is quite young, but like they come out and they just hit this immense fame. And obviously it's different now from when we started with The Only Ways Essex because social media wasn't a fraction. We didn't even have Instagram, you know. So it's like they come out and all of a sudden they get like two, three, four, five million followers in a matter of weeks. Yeah, it's That's crazy. quite a lot to take on, isn't it? Oh my gosh, So like they're really huge. kind of going in there for like, you know, followers and fame and stuff like that. And I just think like we've... I mean, I'm sure that most parents would do the same. Like, it's kind of guiding them and obviously always supporting what they want to do, but then also just letting them know that it's not just about the fame and the followers. Like, there's a lot more to consider when you're going on these shows now, isn't yeah, there? It's just not as... Well, it's like... It's the, so different because of Instagram and... I think, like, the biggest thing would be what you'd have to prepare yourself as a family for and them as well is that... It's the trolls. It's the trolls. Unfortunately, yeah. in this world that we live in, it's it's crazy but you do get these horrible people and I think that for me as exactly. a parent would be the hardest thing I think mm-hmm. you know everything else you could take with a pinch of salt and it's a pinch bit of, of fun Absolutely. and you know they're, yeah. they're kids you know they're young they're going to do what they want to do but I think I'd find that really hard really difficult if anyone said and you would, would see be it nasty. You? and they do because you would take over their social media and you read the press and you would read and hear about it but I just think you yeah, you have to be. I think you have to be a, a tough person mentally to go on a show like that. Yeah, because it you go from like sort of zero to a hundred when you come out, and I think you literally just have to enjoy it and see it as fun rather than anything else. Yeah, that's a big one, Love Island. Completely I don't know. agree. That's a big one. It's not. But I wouldn't say I would. Feel. My my answer to the question is that if Nelly or Arthur wanted to apply. I would support them, yes. I wouldn't say, no yeah. way, don't do it. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I think, like, support them all the way and just guide them, maybe, like, certain, you know. Who knows? Love Island probably won't be around when they're older. It'll, It'll be, be something, something different, different, won't it? Yeah. It'll be something different that's all the craze. But anyway, it's all we have time for today, guys. Thank you so much for listening, as always. And uh, remember, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel if you want to watch, or you can listen to us from wherever you get your podcast. So, yeah. Bye. Bye.